Hello there. Welcome to the next instalment in my video journey on YouTube. Today we're at the beautiful Northumberland coast at Howick and this little cove behind me that you can see is called Rumbling Cairn. Behind you is what's known as the bathing house or the doctor's house. My target today is to photograph kitty wakes and fulmers in flight and that's just along the coastal path. As I came down the path and I was setting up for this shot I saw offshore two porpoise and it's an area where you often see porpoise and dolphins so I'm hoping for those today as well. You've got to aim high haven't you? There are some beautiful plants along this footpath and the grass verges are full of butterflies, moths, bees, caterpillars. I'll see what I can find along the way to show you. So as you can see, this area is beautiful but also popular with people. Um, you can see the paddle borders there, kayakers, sorry, or is that both? And we've got the, the core steering group. As we come round you can see the sloping rocks that go all the way they keep on going underwater and as they go that little bit deeper what we find is it's very rich in marine life here because you've got the rocky underwater reefs and the kelp jungles so there's a massive biodiversity here and this is area that's popular with dolphin and porpoise where they come to feed <laughs> In the distance, just over there, you can see the cliff staying by the nesting kitty wakes. That's Cullinore's point. We will be going there, but where I want to go for the to photograph Fulmer first is before we get to that spot. Just of note, just in the distance beyond Cullinore's point, you can see Dunstanborough Castle very beautiful area and that's nestled in the dip between those two is the little fishing village of Croste very famous for its kippers where I want to be to start off with the fullness is down on this slope and rock shelf here Last time I was here, there were quite a few just gliding around this shell. Haven't seen any yet, so fingers crossed they're still there. Okay, I'm at the rocky ramp, just about to go down. I've just remembered the last time I was here. On my way down to that ramp, I slipped onto my backside and then slid all the way down. So I've got my tripod out and I'm going to hopefully just use that to steady myself so that I shouldn't slip down yet again. Here we go.
I've made it to safety, relatively speaking. So we're going to go onto that edge and watch out for Fulmer. Okay, I've been sat for about 20 minutes, half an hour, just watching. Watching out the same, watching round this corner. And I haven't seen one Fulmer. So here we are, beginning of August, they've already gone. So what we'll do now is we'll go along to the Kittyway Colony, which I know is still active. I can see them and hear them from here. Well, there's the rocky ramp in the distance that I, and I've just come pretty much straight across the rocks. Um, it's taken me ages, but I'm almost there. I'm cream cracked, but I'm almost there. As you can see, and it's still absolutely beautiful. Thoroughly recommend the Northumberland coast to anybody. So here we go, even though the main colony is over there in the distance, once we get to this section here, and I will just oops, get you a better angle. So as you can see, we've got nesting kitty wakes here as well. What's good about this section is that you're almost, almost, but not quite, at eye level with the birds. And I'm quite close, but the birds aren't disturbed by me. As you can see, they're just going about the business quite happily. So what we'll do, we'll get a few shots of the birds on the nest, the, the youngsters that are still here are quite large now, they're almost fully fledged and soon they'll be off to sea and they'll spend the winter at sea and they won't come back to land until next year. So there you are, you can see Kitty Wakes on the cliff there now. You've got two adults and two youngsters which are bottom centre and bottom right. You can tell they're the youngsters because they've got the, the black Martins down the side of the wing and they will be away any day. It's always worth when you come to a place like this observe the birds, observe them for a while, watch their flight paths, see if you can identify a pattern. For instance here they are flying to and from the nest so they're on a reasonably the same level all the time. The trick is finding which one's going to which nest. If you knew that, you'd be golden. To photograph these birds, I'm going to be using my Canon EOS R with the EF 100-400mm Mark II lens. Shooting on manual, but with auto ISO set. And my EF tracking for focus, because that's always the hardest bit getting the focus right on a bird in flight I've got it set to the tracking option and the biggest tip I can give you for photographing these birds with your auto focus is to not shoot straight away get locked onto the bird give your auto focus that split second to lock on and then start taking photographs. 
Okay, with the EOS R, I've got it set to high high speed shooting. So multiple frames per second, the EOS R does not have the highest frame rate. It's another reason for just picking your picking your shots. But if you can do that, this camera is capable of some really excellent results and some really dire ones. I will do a full review of this in due course because I have a love-hate relationship with this camera. First thing I'm going to do is take a couple of test shots just to make sure I've got my exposure right. Okay, I've taken a, a couple of test shots and it's clipping the highlights just as it stands. So what I'm going to do is actually shoot minus two thirds of a stop just to make sure I don't clip the highlights on the kitty wig and it's quite harsh sunlight. Well, let's have a go. Another thing with birds in flight, if you can, it's often best to pre-focus, to set distance. And once you start tracking a bird, wait for it to come somewhere near in focus before you start to pressure auto focus. So I'm focusing on that ledge over there and then waiting for the bird to come round. Right, I've brought you up to the colony, just so you can see. It's quite noisy. There's a lot of action still going on, but it's nowhere near what it was a month ago. Come and see one of these colonies when the party's in full flow. Noisy, raucous full of action, birds are full of attitude, there's always something going on. Stay a respectable distance away and the birds are okay, they're quite used to people but you don't want to go too close. But from this distance you can get great shots with most focal length lenses. So come and see one of these anywhere in the country do your research, come and see these birds for yourself, they are fabulous. And still they're finding time to bicker over territory. It's just one of 101 things I love about seabirds. They're noisy, they're raucous, they're full of attitude. I, I think they're beautiful creatures. Oh wow. Let's see if we can get a shot of this. We have got... Two fledglings there that you can see. All along this colony there's a lot of empty spaces, empty nests where the birds have already left. And the rest of these birds will all be gone within a week. And that will be it until next year. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go up to the top of the cliff and see if we can get some nice bird in flight shots at eye level. Let's go. Okay, as you can see, I've come to the top of the cliff and I'm not far away from the edge. So 
so please this is not something for a windy day and also watch where you're putting your feet where I am here there's a lot of trampled grass where other people have been to view the birds photograph the birds stay within the trampled grass area safety first no photograph is worth getting injured or worse please stay safe what I'm going to do from here I'm above that first kittiwake colony so I've got a unique view looking down at the birds as they come to and fro and sometimes they come up to eye level as well So let's give, oh, I'm going to fall off there, you know, am I? <laughs> that would make good video, but only once. Right, let's give this a go. First thing I've done is pre-focused. There's a young step. One of the problems, no matter what focus system you've got on, what focus selection, is if the bird's too small in the frame, to begin with, the focus will lock on the background. So as soon as, it, soon as it does that, just switch to and wait, pick your moment for another subject. 